Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, uh, insha'Allah, we will have a very interesting format. And uh, uh, before we start, I have a request. If you have a water bottle after you finish drinking it or whatever, do not crumble it. Do not make noise with it because it is very disruptive. You may drink, but please do not make noise with it, okay? And uh, I have four of the young people who uh, showed interest in sharing their ideas, which we really would like to, uh, to do uh, on an ongoing basis. So there's one more missing person who said he would be, and I know it's a boy, okay, he said he is willing, but I don't see him. Well, if he comes later, we will welcome him. And uh, uh, the format that we will have today is uh, a kind of an interview. I will be asking each one of the girls and boys to make an opening statement to say anything they want to say uh, for about five minutes, and then I will get them going. I'll be asking them questions. I will be uh, uh, cornering them you know, in a place, and they will find that they cannot get out of it, because uh, that's how things will get exciting, inshallah. And you may ask as well, if you have any questions for them, uh, I want you to, uh, to do that. Uh, so are we ready, inshallah, for that? Yes. Do you like that? Yes. You don't like that, okay. Before, before we start, uh, I remember, I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken, but I remember last week I asked questions about things that appeared on the video clip, and there were five people who gave correct answers. Uh, five. Now don't, uh, I'm going to ask to raise your hand. So I want to see five hands only, not 20, okay? So if you answered a question correctly, I want you to come and make a line. I want five only, those five who answered. Okay, come on. If you answered correctly, so I see two only. Two only. Oh, the three are in the school. So we will give them their gifts in the school. Uh, first of all, uh, do you like Popeyes? <laughs> you do? <laughs> do you? What do you like about it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he likes chicken, right? <laughs> it is all about chicken. So you like taste, you like everything. So you would like to go and have a free meal at Popeyes? Oh, wow. No. You didn't answer. So you can have your seat back if you don't want. Do you? You don't know. Yes. Do you like Popeyes? I haven't tasted Would you like to taste it? It's halal chicken. Would you like to taste it? Inshallah. Okay. Now, first of all, I want you to turn to your left. Okay, see that ball. Uh, see that. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you know, how shall I put it? See that uh, uh, handsome-looking man there. There are many handsome-looking men. So everybody is looking at you now. So see that. You know where where uh, Uncle Neji is. You know just doing this. See that. Okay, he gave you coupons to go to Popeyes, and on top, look what he prepared for you as well. Wow. So, are you clapping for this or for Popeyes? <laughs> for both. For both. Okay. So now, I'm going to give you this, okay, and this, and I'll keep the coupons. <laughs> Uh, no, it's yours. What do you say? Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. 
you know, I don't know why I felt he's going to say thank you, and I would say to him, how about Jazakallahu Khairan? And he cut me off by saying Jazakallahu Khairan. Allahu Akbar. What am I supposed to say to you? Wa iyyakum. Allahu Akbar. See, we are, inshallah, going in the right path towards a bright future. So can you, after I say takbir, you say Allahu Akbar, takbir. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. Okay, how about you take this as well? Okay, don't lose it. Okay, and if I ask questions now, everybody will try to answer. Because from now on, we will have many coupons to Popeyes and have Uncle Amr go broke. Uh, <laughs> that we will, you can have your seat back, that's all I'm gonna give you. <laughs> now, uh, you know what? Can two able bodies take this away from me because I don't want to cover myself in front of them because I want to be able to speak freely to them. So can we move this to the corner? Okay, not you. Uh, we can, yes, please. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and I want you to arrange your chairs like this so that I can see you, okay? Like this, okay, and like this, okay, like this, okay, you can sit, okay? And now I can see you and, do you think I'm that old that <laughs> if, if I get tired, I will sit, just like a lot there, okay? Now, uh, maybe I can start by sitting and we all have to start uh, by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing us one more week, inshallah, to uh, be able to benefit from each other and have a plan for our future, your future. But it is my future as well, even though uh, I am uh, 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 older than you a little bit. Uh, it's not funny. <laughs> Do you want to talk today? Do you want to talk? Sure, I do. So you started the wrong way. <laughs> Stop laughing, please. Anyway, so inshallah, uh, 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 we are going to uh, uh, talk about uh, the title of today's meeting after we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we do it? We start usually by saying Alhamdulillah, wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Then we make a dua that Prophet Musa السلام, made before he went to uh, meet with Fir'aun. And not that, you know, we are going to meet with uh, Fir'aun, but uh, it's a beautiful dua. And he said, Rabbi shrahli sadri, wa yassir li amri, wahlul uqdatan min lisani, yafqahu qawli, O Allah, expand my chest with ease and make my task easy and loosen a knot from my tongue so that everybody will understand what we have to say okay now today uh, we chose to continue talking about social media and from your and from your side, from your perspective, you wanted to educate us a little bit more so that uh, we can have a meaningful plan for the future. Already, uh, Uncle Mir uh, and a few other sisters and brothers uh, decided to uh, uh, put a plan of action, uh, but they are waiting for you, the people who will benefit from it the most, to, to help them. Uncle Mir, do you need their help or yes. you need their help? Okay, he's saying yes. Okay, uh, Ihab, uh, where is Ihab? Ihab, 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 Ihab. Do you need their help? Yes. Inshallah. Okay, so uh, Naji, do you need their help? Yes, everybody needs you, everybody is going to be listening to what you have to say. So the way we will start is that uh, I know that you have prepared something to say, uh, so I will let you say it. Uh, Najib, do you have that uh, microphone so that they can speak from it? Uh, make 
your statement either standing or sitting, it's up to you. And then after that, I'm going to tell you something and then we'll ask questions and we'll have lots of fun and everybody will participate. So who wants to be first? Uh, I'll go if nobody wants. If nobody wants, do you want to? He's, he's, uh, he's a little bit bashful. I don't mind it. You don't mind, oh, so you want to be first, okay. Yeah. So why don't you start inshallah and you speak for about five minutes and then we will go to one of you. Okay, so, so now just let us start off with Instagram or how I love to call it, the wall of fame. When it first came out, Everybody was like kind of crazy about how many followers they had, which was pretty interesting to me. And we obviously cannot forget about the, the celebrities or the influencers who have perfect lives. Now, let's pause here first. Wait, perfect? Is that even possible? I think that it's just a huge show. Like, come on, you will not post that fight you had with your parents the other day. Or that test you almost failed. I don't think I would go on with that. But let's face it and look at the other point of view. There are still some of them up there that are actually good. They have a message. They are simply true influencers. But this still does not solve our main problem. How can we prove it? Or in other words, what is the evidence that we have to support this? Well, that's why we're here today, I guess. Let's analyze it together. When you think about posts, what is usually the first thing that comes on your mind? Anybody? You know, this is not a monologue. You know, let's all participate. Yeah. How many likes are you gonna get? Likes, yeah, that's a great one. Comments. Yes. Comments. Comments, that's a good one. Yep. Are you going to caption your photo? Make that is so true. Can you repeat what she said? Uh, like ha uh, the caption that you're going to attach to the photo. Okay. So, I expected that. Likes, shares, pictures, comments, all of these stuff. But would you really think about the impact? that this post would have on a person that does not have the facility or the particular thing that you do? I mean, not really. It's just as simple as pressing a button. Now, I have like a little post to share with you guys, so would you allow me? Absolutely, you still have three minutes. Okay, as she is getting ready, does anybody uh, want to uh, say, oh, you have it with you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. How long do you expect to prepare it? It's just like a minute. Are you almost ready? Yeah. Yes, okay. So you have a post. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, my phone is pretty small, so yeah. By I'll the way, this. you know, I'm sorry, I failed to mention that this is Maria. You know, usually you say that at the beginning, but it doesn't matter. So the caption, the caption with this post was Adam Wakir, one word. يعيش فيه الناس حياتين مختلفتين. People live in it with two different lives. This conflict is trying to kind of show the point of view of a Turkish artist. In my opinion, this is a masterpiece. <coughs> OK, 
Okay, now, do you want me to say what I'm seeing? Sure, yeah. Okay, I'm seeing two kids uh, running, uh, holding balloons, and one half of the picture is the Eiffel Tower in Paris, and the other side of the picture obviously is a from, from a place where there's destruction, there's war, uh, you know, and uh, both kids are running and I'm seeing smiles on their faces. So these are the contradictions of life being lived on the same planet. Uh, this is what I've seen. Uh, here I'm seeing uh, again two sides of the same picture. Uh, I'm seeing on the right, uh, you know, a bridge and a forest, a father hugging his son and playing on a guitar, obviously in a happy mood. While on the left, I'm seeing a very poor person uh, sitting behind barbed wire holding a very sad looking child. So uh, two sides of the same story, a loving father and a loving father, but this is comfortable, this is poor. Here, okay, again, there is the front of a yacht uh, where people are going uh, on a cruise or uh, you know, for a happy outing and here there are at the end uh, boat people that we heard a lot about those who drowned in the Mediterranean. Again, contradictions, contradictions, contradictions. Okay, if I would describe it again, the same person uh, through Photoshop, I'm assuming, uh, you know, the same person on the uh, left, uh, she is having a costume of a kind of a superhero. And on the left, she is dressed in very shabby uh, clothing. Uh, the same person. Sure. Yes. I think that this describes it way better than I do. Let's think about it. These are the true influencers. These are the people that we should look up. I'd like you guys to think about it, observe it a little bit, and then we're going to come back. Mashallah. Thank you. Mashallah. Uh, now, uh, let us keep on lively and moving. Uh, so you introduce yourself and tell us for five minutes what you want to tell us. Uh, my name is Hamdi. And, uh, when I grew up, like when I was younger, I didn't have a phone. I just recently got a phone. And like when I was younger, we'd all like me and my brother would go play and all that stuff. I didn't have the distraction around me. I remember when we were younger, we would uh, we wouldn't have an Xbox or PS4 like you guys do. We um, we'd go play sports outside, like soccer and you know other stuff. And when we had a Wii though, a, a Wii that, you know, was old, you know, we still played on it, it was really fun. But it seemed to break down from like September 4th to uh, June 26th, you know, and uh, miraculously, it uh, worked again in the summer. And uh, not having a phone until recently really um, was like, it applied to uh, be able to do many more things. I was able to become uh, the president of my student council in grade eight, and um, I was able to achieve m many more of my goals. This week, I did an experiment. When I came home from school, I'd leave my phone on the desk and leave it there until the next morning. And I realized that I got way better scores on my desk made many more friends and I was able to play with my brothers more and have much more fun. And it also allowed me to do much more of my homework. Like it, it made me like feel more free to do more things. And also another topic that I want to talk about is the social media. 
that whenever someone posts something, it's got many more layers onto it. Like, for example, if I post a picture of myself right now, I'll have to put, uh, like, a, like, you know, like a layer just to make it look brighter, or, you know, like some, you know, highlights and stuff like that. And then you'd have to put a caption, like she said, make it look nice and all that stuff. And then I'd wait there, looking to see how many people would like it photo. Well. At this stage of my life, I don't really want to occupy myself with this thing. You think that it's just a distraction. A lot of people, they get distracted of it and get like really bad marks. I hear at my school, oh, I got this bad mark, I get this bad mark. And I see that they, all they worry about is their likes, their posts, and their followers. Thank you. Hamdi, I, I want to ask you, uh, you said that you put your phone on your desk and you don't get it until the next morning. Is it you or your parents who really ask you not to hold your phone during you know, the evening? Oh no, I do that by myself. Um, it was an experiment because last time that you came, you told me that uh, you, you said to everyone that if they didn't leave their phones for an entire week, <coughs> yeah. you know, it would so, so basically you did that as a result of what we talked about uh, so you can see that, alhamdulillah, this is working. Uh, we hope that we don't just come and listen to a talk and then go home, life as usual. Let's hope, inshallah, that we can interact with that. You said that you didn't get a smartphone or a phone until recently. Did you resent that? Did you tell your parents, but I, I want to be like everyone else, why don't you get me you know, a phone? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, but I know they are very mean. <laughs> no, did you catch that on the phone? Okay, so so you you didn't you didn't like that, but then you discovered that it's working. Okay, and you said that you're having more friends, you're playing with your brothers and you know the rest of the family. You are you are having fun. Okay, you're enjoying family life. Okay, now I would like you to pass the uh, microphone uh, to another star here. Okay, who will introduce himself? and uh, you know, talk for five minutes or less. Brother Muniz? Yes. And because of the sound going up and down, yeah. yes. it's very annoying. Yes. Maybe the kids, they can talk without the microphone. Maybe it's better. Okay, would you like to do that? You know, so speak loud without the, because the microphone here is, is not that good. Okay, let me see how loud you can talk. Introduce Hi. yourself, give me that. Hi, my name's Abedullah. No, um, MashaAllah, that's good. Stand up and, and so that the camera will capture you, okay, and people see how handsome you are. <laughs> um, today I'm going to talk about uh, social media and how it can impact a bunch of people uh, negatively and also positively. Positively. Um, so uh, the thing is that posts on any social media can, uh, like, it can either be a selfie, motivational quote, or it can be something Islamic. Uh, like all the time I see people, they post uh, du'as and, and stuff onto their Facebook accounts. And I, I surprisingly very rarely see it on Instagram. And um, yeah, I like, for a couple years now, I've, I've gotten uh, like phones after phones and I have, uh, like, our whole house has been buried in phones. And, like, I, I've seen that uh, a lot. Uh, like, I, I, I had fun with my brothers a lot and uh, before that, and that uh, after they got their phones, uh, like, um, I, like, they barely, uh, they barely, like, hanged out with me and stuff. Uh, but recently, uh, they they've been starting to talk to me a lot. They've they've been starting to hang out and stuff, and um, uh, yeah, they they've been talking to me more. And uh, I've actually um, my brother once went to a camp without his phone for uh, for about a week, and once he came back, did he survive? <laughs> <laughs> he did. It was an Islamic camp. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and uh, once he came back, uh, he, he, he 
was uh, he was very happy with me. He was respecting me a lot, and um, uh, yeah, he, he was he was just happy altogether. And uh, that's just the effect that could happen to you if you have your phone. Uh, like if you have your phone, then uh, it is like as he said a distraction. If you don't have your phone, then you, you get to know more of the outside world. But also. You you can uh, you can also um, <clears throat> you can also um, make people learn more and um, like you can teach people. Also, I've had online classes. People uh, online Islamic classes. They uh, they um, they go on uh, like. Uh, they do an online call, and you do uh, you like recite Quran, and then uh, you memorize Quran, and then you recite it. Or you can also like uh, they can also teach uh, tafsir and stuff like that, which can help you read Quran better. And that just shows how uh, like how um, social media, which people surround it a lot, as like. A thing that uh, that we shouldn't be like uh, that we shouldn't like jump into, which I I agree, because there are more uh, there are more uh, like bad things on on social media than there are good, but once you find that good, you'll you'll strive to find more good. So um, uh, I'm just saying that it like social media it can be used as a good a good thing to derive a message uh, across to other people, and also um, it could uh, like it could also be used as a bad thing if people choose to. Yes. I appreciate that so much. So now it's your turn, so you can hang this uh, somewhere. Let's hear from you, introduce yourself, and then... So, my name's Hanin. Apparently, I'm related to Maria. I'm her cousin. And I'm 13. She's 14, just saying. So, when I grew up, I grew up around my iPad. I've gotten it since 2014 now, so it's been exactly four years old. But I haven't been on social media quite a lot, except if you count Facebook. It was our craze, like my cousin and I's craze back then. We would like make Facebook pages and like share, like you know, princesses and all the girly stuff like that. It was really quite stupid if we look back at it now. But Instagram, Snapchat, things like that, I didn't really use that much, even now. It's just, I use it now for kind of like looking at pictures from my sports teams. I don't use it that much. And I find every single time someone, like my friends and things like that, when they post something, I find comments like hot, pretty, stuff like that. But I don't think the commenters really mean it. They just try to make the person feel good. Which I don't really find convincing. I think if you have something nice, it's nice to say, but like, you have opinions too. Just don't say it, keep it to yourself. Don't say, like, like don't lie. So now I'm gonna go over to another topic. I have a baby brother. He's two, he's two years old and nine months now. He's crazy, he's crazy obsessed about YouTube. He, he, hasn't, he hasn't gotten hooked to YouTube until like one and a half years old because he, he would see us like all my family, he would see us on electronics, watching YouTube, going on Facebook, playing games, things like that. And any time we try to make him do something, he would refuse unless we tell him you're gonna watch YouTube. So he would like run, he would like run and do the thing, like do the task right away, and then we have no choice but give him the phone. And every time we try to get him to watch something useful, like Quran, cartoons, and program TV series and stuff like that, 
we can't just leave the phone with him because then he would switch to the videos he likes to watch, which are pretty useless. He knows how to switch? To yes. Course. He is pretty smart for almost a Yeah, I remember I used to do that when I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> But recently, my parents bought him a bunch of puzzles, which were quite uh, occupied him for a bit, away from the electronics. And he, he really likes puzzles, and he likes putting them together. And I, I'm, really, I'm really surprised that he knows how to put like, crazy hard puzzles for his age, like 24 pieces, and he puts them on, and he, he solves it like in two minutes. And I'm really surprised. I just love my baby brother, but I don't like him watching YouTube because he opens, he goes on useless videos, like, like solve. Can you, okay, let me, let me ask you. Uh, you said that he can solve it just like that. Is it because intelligence is part of his genes or did he learn some skills from YouTube that benefited him? What do you think is happening? No, I think it's just part of his genes. Because on YouTube he just watches useless songs and like the baby baby shark and the Banker family and the, these stupid songs and it's just in his genes. Like I didn't really solve puzzles when I was young. It's just one day my parents bought him a puzzle set and then he just solved it, kept solving it. So now he works. He he plays with puzzles. He doesn't ask for YouTube. No, not that much anyways. And whenever whenever he really wanted to wants to watch YouTube, we either put it on the TV or we take the device itself and put it kind of away from him. So he watches something useful and do like the tasks like my parents have to force him to eat while watching. So like kind of like multitask. How about iPad for you? Well, my parents, it's kind of the house rule now. We don't get electronics unless it's the weekend. And I, like in the past few years, I thought it was quite unfair because most of my friends would have their electronics 24/7, and they would do whatever they want on it without any supervision. And I would think it would it would be quite unfair that I don't get the same as them. But then recently, I found it was for my own sake to finish my own homework, to, to explore in my community, to help other people, and things like that. And I'm going I, I really like my house rule now. I think. Uh, electronics are kind of a distraction, and like we would have been better off uh, without them. Really, I mean, they're kind of useful. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Promise to be honest. I think you're honest. Okay. Does a 13 years old appreciate rules? Aren't rules? Ugh, I don't know how to describe them. Yeah, no. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I don't like my parents' rules, and I don't think my friends like rules as much as well because they just like hanging out, like hanging out and texting 24 seven. Like my friends would go in the washroom in the middle of school just to get out their phone and text their friends. Is this good? No. It's not. Because it would distract your schoolwork. And honestly, some of my friends are getting not so great, uh, uh, great grades in their own schoolwork. Can I ask you a question? Do you think that the Board of Education should ban Phones from school premises. Okay. Well, it depends. You know, I, 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 I'm saying, should they? Okay. Now, when I hear that kids are going to the washroom to text their friends, I'm, I'm very concerned. Okay. So I'm asking, would you support? Let's say if it ever comes to to to, to passing, would you support such a decision? Well, it depends because sometimes my teachers let us use our devices for research purposes yes. and yeah, for like history or science, things like that. But then again, we have our own Chromebooks in our own uh, class, so we can use these too. But then people can go on and just play online games, they can go online on social media, even though they're not supposed to. Okay. Thank you so much. And you can keep this with you. Uh, we will need it. Okay. Jazakallah khair. Uh, I, I would like to uh, basically ask you yes or no. Uh, do you support uh, to put a limit on devices? Yes or no? 
because you are the one who said there are negative impacts and there are positive impacts. So would you support putting a limit on, can we go back to the years when we didn't have them? You know, as, as Hamdi said that uh, now we try for a week to uh, uh, put the phone aside and he now enjoys time with his uh, family. He, uh, and I'm sure you do the same thing. You said your brother uh, or brothers are, uh, you know, hanging out with you more and you like that. So, do you support putting a limit? Uh, yeah. Okay. But, but Some limit. Okay. What about you, Hamdi? Yes, some limit, but the limit can't be like too much to the extent where you can't even use it if you don't use it. For example, can, can, can you repeat that? For example, um, so you said you support the limit. I support the limit, but not to the extent where we don't have enough time to even use it. Like, okay, you get it before bed, but then, so your parents say, okay, you do your homework and all that good stuff, and then. Okay, you can use your phone. Oh no, it's too late for bedtime. You can't use your phone. And then the kids just get really upset and go crazy. And then the next day, they keep doing that and doing that, and then the kids just get fed up. Parents can be things. I think we should be. I think we should be kind of uh, more specific with the kind of limits we should have. So some apps are actually youth useful in school research and stuff, but others are not as much. So for example, Snapchat maybe. I know tons of people that are actually snapping and they're just really into it and they're using it even the washroom that happens a lot, especially in high school. So I think the limits should be more specific on some applications because let's be honest, not every single app out there is bad. Because some apps, the main purpose of them is to just inform you more, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and is to. Can, can you play. can you imagine life in the future without these gadgets? Do you think it would ever happen, or it's just we are going in one direction? Personally, I think that everything is possible as long as we put the actual effort. Because if you're just gonna sit here and just like for example speak and say well we should do this we should do that and then afterwards boom you just forget everything you go back to bed and text well no it doesn't work out like that we have to put the effort we have to actually have that kind of passion for creating the change okay do you want to add something yeah. uh i do agree on a little bit but you can't just you know from like change from like, your kids have five hours to, to one hour a day. It has to go gradually. And there are apps, I've seen ads on uh, YouTube and Google and things like that. I've seen ads that like pair monitors. So like you could link your device with your kid's device and you would monitor their activity and watch what they're going on. And then you have like, you know, a timer or a time limit. So then your, your kid's uh, device would turn off or they send a message that, oh, your time limit is done, so you have like to wait until next day or things like that. MashaAllah. Now, if you appreciated what you heard from these uh, luminaries of the future, I want to hear uh, MashaAllah and the, you know, the tone of voice of your MashaAllah will tell us how appreciative you are. So, can we say MashaAllah? MashaAllah! MashaAllah, so you appreciate it the most. Okay? Now, uh, if you don't find a chair, you can come and sit, you know, right here in front of me. Okay? MashaAllah, yes, yes, say something. MashaAllah. So, my parents, uh, what, what they do is that, um, even though I, I, uh, I, very, I very rarely actually get any school, uh, schoolwork at all, I mean, especially this year, but I, I still, even if I do have homework, my parents still give me uh, some Islamic homework. Like uh, I, I write some Islamic stuff. I read 
couple pages of Quran, and I, I read and sometimes memorize some hadith. So, uh, yeah, after I do that, uh, like, they, they can give me uh, my phone or something so I can use it uh, for, uh, for uh, like, uh, a couple hours. Then my mom tells me to take a break. I, I, I take a break. I eat. I pray. I, I, like, read or something. And then after, I go back. So, yeah, that's, that's what Did I you do. say a couple of hours? Uh, yeah, but uh, not like, <laughs> not, not way too long, like, uh, not so long that you, like, go crazy or something. Just, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Like, Mariam, what, Mariam wants to add something, and then I have to, uh, uh, you know, get to something important. Okay. Um, I think that, uh, we actually have the control of either making the, our usage of social media a disadvantage or an advantage. Now, I personally uh, had an interest in uh, learning Italian, <laughs> and right now I'm actually taking online kind of courses slash uh, classes that I actually have been to the point that I can actually uh, introduce myself in Italian. How amazing is can you this? Do that? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. No, no, come on. Yes. Okay. Uh, ciao. Um, so, my name is Mariam. Sono, sono Mariam. Or, uh, if you should ask something, someone about something, can I ask you something? You go up to them and be like, Mi scuse, posso farvi una domanda? Mashallah, mashallah, that's beautiful. So, somebody would come up to me and be like, bless you. <laughs> okay. But, like, yeah, you can actually. Uh, learn something new from this. Like, you, you can recite Quran, I know this for a fact. You can learn a new language, you can gain a new experience, you can actually know someone new that have the same kind of um, interests you have and build up a good relationship with that person. So, you can either, you have the choice to make it a blessing yes. or a disadvantage. Allah, Allah, Allah. You choose. You know, Maria, I, I know a few words. Do you want me to? Sure, yeah. Roma, Milano. <laughs> Italia. Uh, about what you said, making new friends online, you can't just trust anyone. Yeah. Like, true. yeah, like they could be a 60 year old, but then say they're a 12 year old online. They like lies can have. I lied myself online, like Facebook. The, the limit is 13 years old, but I made my account, like my cousin, my oldest cousin made the account for me when I was seven. Mm -hmm. I had that too. Okay. And like, okay. you can't let anyone follow you because they can see your own private pictures. You have to make your account private. No, I know, but then you can't just let anyone follow yeah, you. You'll fight later, okay. Anyway, uh, this is, okay, very, very important, and I want to, uh, uh, share with you that uh, maybe it'll take us a few weeks to discuss what I'm going to share with you because I came across uh, something uh, related to a book that a psychologist by the name of Leonard Sachs wrote. Leonard Sachs wrote a book called you know, and the title of the book is really alarming. It's called The Collapse of Parenting. Now, I know that when parents are going to hear this title and see what his recommendations are, uh, they will be alarmed because, uh, you know, we are afraid and we are witnessing that uh, the way parenting is being done now is totally different than uh, 10 years ago. 15 years back, uh, the way my father did his parenting on me, my mother did her parenting on me, is different than I'm doing my parenting on my children. Now, what I'm going to do is that I will introduce one, two, three, as long as it takes to comfortably absorb one of his 27 recommendations. 
And I came to know about this because Leonard Sachs gave a summary of his book at the Masjid in Texas. He was invited. He's a, he's a Jewish professor, uh, but he was invited to a masjid in Texas, and he spoke about this. And that's how, uh, because I, you know, get to, uh, you know, through Facebook to know about these things. And this is what I'm going to start sharing with you, one recommendation at a time. And you will be surprised at some of the things that he said we should be doing. Number one, okay, listen, make your kids, and I want to know your opinion, whether you agree with him or not. Now, it doesn't mean that because he said it, we have to agree. We may say, well, what he said is difficult. Maybe we should do more. He said, number one, make your kids. I don't know the word make. Can we make our kids? Let's see what he said. Make them do what? Make your kids speak your native language at home and with you. So if you happen to speak Urdu back in Pakistan, make your kids speak to you and among each other Urdu. That's what he said. Do you agree? Let, let's hear that because we want to move slowly through. The, you know how many parents have come to me and they said we are struggling. You know, when the kids were young, we spoke to them in Arabic, in Urdu, in Swahili, in, you know, and they were fine. Until they went to school, all of this changed because they became more comfortable speaking in English. And there are some who say, what's wrong with that? You know, there are those who say, you know, we should insist that every Muslim child should speak the language of the Quran. Are we doing that? The answer is no, we are not. Okay, now, uh, I, you said something. Yes. You speak Arabic fusha, you said, at home. You know what's Arabic fusha? It's the uh, proper Arabic, which nobody speaks at home. We all speak the slang Arabic. He said fusha, are you sure? They speak Algerian, but they ask you to speak proper Fusha Arabic. You learn from TV, and do you speak that? Do you find it, you know, interesting? Now, who, who agrees that we should teach our children or make them speak our native tongue at home plus Arabic or minus Arabic, it doesn't matter, you know, if I speak Urdu or I used to speak Urdu, Urdu will suffice. And those who say plus Arabic and those who say I really don't care what they speak, as long as they get to know values, their religion properly, it doesn't matter. So we heard what Leonard Sachs recommended. Okay, I, I want to hear from you what, yes. What if they don't have to go there? But like, if they live here and speak their native language, then they need other people from the country because they can more connected with them as well. So, uh -huh. so speaking the language of our parents will make us feel more connected. That's one opinion. Yes. At home, I speak, I speak Arabic more often than English. Good for you. Good for you. She speaks more Arabic than English at home. Okay, uh, yes? I think that having the opportunity to be bilingual or trilingual is a blessing that not everybody has. So if, you have, if you have the opportunity, you just take it. But I don't like the word make because when you force someone to do something, yeah. it takes away of their love for that thing. Yes. Would, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Would, you, would you be willing if later on, by the way, I love this team and I'm planning to make this team grow because I have an idea one day when I have about 20 of you like this, okay, I have something that I want to do in London, inshallah. Would you be willing to join this team? 
because mashallah you are right she said it's a blessing to be bilingual or trilingual okay because you know it's it's good but i don't like the word may because unless you really like to do it you will not really do it comfortably okay and if if we are getting bored okay we may do something but i'll try to make it as uh, Okay, so thank you very much for what you said. Okay, Uncle Mia. I'm not saying uncle for me, I'm saying uncle for the others. Yes, they say that the more language the child learns, the more brilliant the child becomes. That's one fact that has been proven. The other thing is there are some languages, like mine, is useless to teach my children because they can only talk to me. They can't talk to the mother because the mother's language is Arabic. So there are some languages that are worthy of learning, and some languages are very limited use. So in this case, as Muslim, I would prefer my children to be able to speak Arabic. Okay, so Arabic. You know, can I just say, not because I am of the habit of putting other cultures or faith traditions down, on the contrary, I elevate people who really respect their culture. And in this context, I once gave a Friday khutbah about Hebrew being a sacred language for Jews. Not a preferred language, it's a sacred language. Meaning that every Jewish person needs to learn and speak Hebrew. Now, and I say to myself, there's nowhere in the Quran that says Arabic is sacred. But we hear many a time through the opening of, let's say, Surah Yusuf, for example, and other places in the Qur'an where it says Allah sent this Qur'an in Arabic for a purpose, okay? So I am of the opinion, how many kids, okay, kids, okay, now I'm starting to get a little bit not too happy with some who are speaking while I'm talking, not because of me, but because when someone is talking out of respect, we should listen, okay? So, how many would vote? And I'm serious. I don't want to have a hand to be raised like this. I want like this when I ask the question. How many would vote that all Muslim kids, it doesn't matter what their parents speak at home, how many would say, we should all learn Arabic? Okay, now I want some brave souls who did not raise their hands when I say, how many really believe that it's not necessary to learn Arabic as long as I learn the essentials of my deen? How many say, it's not necessary? Ahmed, can you please tell me? Yes, yes. I, I, you know, because I know you are a brave soul. Okay, why don't you think it's necessary? Uh, do you want me to, to have your mother close her ears first? I think we're on the same page. With this well, okay, okay, so, so yes. Um, like you said, I think as long as you're um, kind of pulling in everything you need to from the Quran. Yes. Um, and, I mean, it is in Arabic in the Quran, but it's, there are also English Qurans as well in other languages, and it's all the same information, right? It's not English Qurans. There's no such thing, but it's the meaning. Translation. Translation. Okay, yes, okay. yes, yes. As long as you have that information, I don't think it matters what language you're speaking. There's you know, what Ahmed said is something that uh, scholars at times say. It. We shouldn't be afraid to say, I, I don't think so. Okay, but how many would, would agree that it doesn't really matter? Okay. Okay, now uh, don't, don't, don't be shy to express yourself. This meeting on Sunday here at the Islamic Center is all about expressing our opinions. So as you can see, the majority, the majority feels that learning Arabic, you know, is essential. We really need to. And others say, as long as I learn, okay, what... Uh, uh, my dean teaches me it doesn't matter. But let me argue, Ahmed, not because I want to go against you, okay? 
uh, you know how much I love you and I respect you, uh, but I want to say something. There remains certain things in the Quran that require linguistic knowledge. Unless we have knowledge of Arabic, we will not be able at all to understand them. Okay? And you may say, so, what's the fault of Russian Muslims? If they cannot, you know, there is a base for everything, and there are frills. You know when you go to no frills, you know what's no frills, okay? Uh, so, so you can understand Islam without the knowledge of Arabic. Do you all agree? Yes. yes. We can understand Islam without knowledge of Arabic. But if you want to become more and more and more knowledgeable, then Arabic is a plus. So, yes? I actually regret because my, both my parents speak Arabic, but as a child, my father went to uh, university and he was taking a master's in English, and they had always spoken English to me in the household. So I actually regret very much to this day, you know, my command on the Arabic language is very deep, and I resent him for that. Can I say something to you? I noticed many parents make this mistake, especially immigrants. You know, when they come to this country, they have heavy accent. When they have children born and raised in Canada, and the children start to speak without an accent, without a heavy accent, actually they become very proud. Listen to my son now, how much command he has of the English language. So it becomes a question of pride. Good for you. No, I say you can still have your children speak without your heavy accent, but it's really good to have your children learn Arabic, learn Urdu, learn Turkish, learn Bosnian. So my recommendation, based on the recommendation of Leonard Sachs, I seem to agree with him, it helps because it's our way of keep connecting to our, who said it? Language. To our heritage. You said something that put us firm, you know, on the discussion that we are making. Jazakallah khair. Because we really, I tell you, I'm not worried about your generation. I'm worried about three generations from yours. When I'm no longer here, and probably you may be no longer here, how will Muslim Canadians be three generations from now? In the year, by the way, 2050, which is not too far from now. We're almost 2020, okay? 30 years from then, how will Muslim Canadians be? Think about it. So this is a recommendation. Uh, now, number two, listen to this. You would be surprised what he said. Reduce generation gap by involving grandparents in the lives of their children, of your children. Agree. In, and he even, I was, he went further. If possible, try to convince their grandparents to move in with you. Today, try telling your children that we are going to make a room for grandma and grandpa. No! <laughs> Can you please come with us? We want to visit grandma. Ah, uh, I don't have time for, you know, tell me. Again, again, be brave. How many of you, we may not have time to really finish the, I tell you, those 27 points may take us, you know, 52 weeks. Okay, now, I, Mariam, I know you come to Canada, you came to Canada almost two years ago, or, or less, okay? Now, your opinion may be biased, because I know back in Egypt how, you know, close-knit, you know, uh, uh, Jiddu and uh, Teta, whatever, but, the, the, but as, as, as a new Canadian, would you support 
having two older, stiff minds come and live with you. Okay. Um, Where is that? Uh, no, she, she's good, I think. Oh, the she's always loud. Would you like to? Uh, would you? Would you support that? Um, okay. May I first say that I support a part of it? So I support that we should reduce the gap. The part that I don't support is um, grandparents actually moving in with you. Because let's be honest, uh, they would require way more care. You know what I mean? Because they're old, they might get sick, and it's not easy. It's so, kind of so having another two you know, other I'm souls. I'm going to challenge you. Sure, yeah. Go ahead. I love challenges. Who would provide that care for them? My parents. Not and, you? Okay. You. <laughs> Is, is your father here? His mom? No, it's my mom. Uh, okay. That's Where, it. Where's, where's mom? Mom. Okay. Register that. <laughs> she, she's, she's in big trouble. Yes, yes. yes. You are Dave. She's, she was yeah. actually telling me she, that she's going to send the video to my <laughs> So now I don't know if you can go to Egypt anymore. <laughs> you will be banned for life. I exposed myself to everything. Okay. Okay. Okay, now here's the thing. Um, I remember back then when I used to live in Egypt, my grandma was very sick. My, so let's say 80% of my mom's time was actually dedicated to my grandma, which I was very inspired by because my mom showed me how important parents are. But this, on the other hand, showed me and my siblings, it kind of had that gap between me and my mom, because Maria, she didn't Maria, care. Maria, 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 Maria. Hold this. Yeah. She said something brilliant. Okay, and I, I want mom to be involved if she wants to. In as much as your care for your parents, okay, was something that taught her a lesson, that it's good. She said, I felt your absence at certain times from my life her life. You know, this is genuine, this is real. I want you to, to comment on that. You know, would you say, but these are my parents, she will have enough time for me to dedicate to her later on. What would you say to this? If you don't want to answer, it's okay. But I respect that. But if you want to comment on this, it's important. Allah, 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 Allah. I wish, I wish, I wish that the camera captured this. Yeah, you have, uh, it didn't, you know, it's okay. Well, you know, I saw Maryam go to her mother, kiss her hand and kiss her forehead to tell her, Mama, uh, I mentioned this because I felt it, but I don't want to, to, to make you feel bad. But she felt that, and you know what, can I tell you something? My in-laws are both desperately in need of my wife and my presence with them. And I tell you, my children uh, do not go to visit them as often as I want to, but they, they, they say, we have our children, we have our lives, we have, but I'm interested in hearing, you know, to what extent do we connect with the grandparents? I, I really would like you to think about this, come prepared, and the topic, let's call it for, we will start next week. Naji, are you here? Yes, the, it will be the challenge of connecting with grandparents. Okay, this is what we will start with next time. But we will, you don't have to justify it, Mariam. You are okay, don't worry, you can yeah, go I home just now. Want her to <laughs> yeah. She said, Mama, please. She's, she's, she's going to comment in Arabic, and then I'm going to say it. Yes, blood, please. Okay. So she is explaining to her, you know, because mom feels more comfortable expressing herself in Arabic, and then Mariam will translate, and that will conclude.
today's session, inshallah. She said that we lived some memories that we can't go back to anymore. Okay. Okay. So so now now grandmother is a memory now. She died some years back, and and uh, it's good for the grandchildren to have those pleasant memories of their grandparents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, make us barreen, which is uh, uh, careful to connect with our parents and our grandparents. So let's modify the title, challenge of connecting with parents and grandparents. So next week we will talk. So come with your stories to tell us about how to be good with or towards our parents and our grandparents or or you can come and tell us stories about how uncomfortable at certain points you were so that we can reach a certain conclusion she just wanted to add a very final point yes uh, one day she didn't have to, the chance to uh, go and take care of her mom and be, due to the lots of work and busy life that she had. One day she, and I actually remember that, one day she went back home in my grandparents to find out that we, actually her kids, it was us who were taking care of my grand. Allah, without, without her, her telling, telling us you. anything. Yes. Observing the action and then doing what she was doing. So you learn by action. Exactly. MashaAllah. So from this point, we will reconnect next week, inshallah. Okay, uh, did everybody have fun? Okay, the most important thing is having fun as we learn. Is having fun as we learn. I want to thank Hanan, is it Hanan? Hanin. Hanin, uh, uh, what's the difference between Hanin and Hanan? Uh, Hanan is like uh, the mercy of your parents, more like the mother. See the knowledge of Arabic, how, how uh, mashallah, you are right. Hameen, Maryam, Rabiullah, is it? Ubaidullah, not Ubaidullah, and Hamdi. Okay, I thank you very much, but now uh, I want to, what's your name? Amani. Amani. Okay, now I want uh, Naji to please register the first five on the team, once we reach 20, there's something very special going to happen, inshallah. So please, please come prepared next week. Tell other, you know, I, I want to tell you something. Uh, the first week and second week, we had more families attending. I know that the chairs are filled, but I'd like more and more coming. And please visit the YouTube channel and register your, it's not again, you know, yes, it's not for me, but we want to reach the world, say inshallah, inshallah, and ask people to subscribe, inshallah, again, the address is drmunirawkasim.com, inshallah, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, wal asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr, إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم جزاكم الله خير